Hi everyone, continuing our tour of the SymPy library, we are now going to see how to use this library to plot functions. The plotting functionalities in SymPy uses other Python libraries but is done behind the scenes so we don't need to worry about the technical details. All we need to know is our symbols and how to set up the symbolic environment which we have done at least twice before but let's repeat. So we import the SymPy library with the alias sp. We then define three Latin and two Greek variables. So to assign symbols to these variables, we use the symbols function. And the symbols we want to assign go in the argument of this function. And we want these variables to be real, so we set real equal to true. We then also define three positive integer variables. So we use the same symbols function from the SymPy library. But the list of symbols is different now. I, J and K. And we want these variables to be integer. So we set integer equal to true. And we want them to be positive. So we set positive equal to true. And now if we click run, we are good to go. And now plotting the functions is as easy as typing plot. And let's apply it to the function x squared. And we will set show equal to true. So this should display the output here. Now if we run, we see it has plotted the function x squared with the default settings. Now we might want to take more control over how the chart is displayed. For example, we might want the x to go from minus 10 to plus 10, which you can see is relatively easy. And we might want to give a title to the chart. So let's keep it simple and just call it x squared. And now if we run, we have the customized title now. And if you scroll down, you will see we have the customized domain as well. Now there are other options one can use to make the graph prettier and more descriptive. But for now, let's add two more lines to the chart. So let's try x square minus 5 and x squared plus 5. So these will vertically shift the graph. And if we run, we have the three lines, but they have the same color. So we can't tell one from the other. So we need a bit more control. So let's remove the lines for now. And let's run so that we refresh things. Now let's set the show equal to false. So it will give us more control as to when to display the chart. And let's assign this object to a variable p. Now if we run, so nothing is displayed. But if we want to display the chart, then we can just apply the function show to p. And now you have the same chart we saw earlier. Now we can add the second line by using the extend function. So we can just copy the same code and then change x squared to x squared minus 5. And let's remove the title. And let's remove it from the first as well and use legend instead this time. So we set legend equal to true. And let's do the same in the second line as well. And let's change the line color of the second to blue. So we set it to B, B for blue. Now if we run the default color also happen to be blue so we get the same color so let's go to the first line and set the line color maybe equal to red or for red and now if we run we have the two lines in different color 
and now we can copy the code and then add the third line which is x squared plus 5 and let's set this color to green so if we run so we have the three lines in different colors now and that's what we wanted now that we have the code set up so it's easy to try variations so let's say we want to scale the first one by three so it will vertically stretch the graph and the second one by one divided by three it will compress the graph vertically by one divided by three and if we run we have the stretch and the compressed version we can also try horizontal shift so if we subtract two from x this should shift the curve to the right and if we add 2 to x it will shift the curve two points to the left and if you run so we can see the graph has been shifted along the x-axis now you can also try other types of transformations say rotations and also horizontal scaling and you can also go to the SymPy documentation to read more about other options and how can you add further customization in the charts and what additional functionalities are available. But hopefully this video gave us enough to get started. So thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next.